Hello, so um, forgive me if I become foggy. I'm still recovering from the shock of the all baby thing. <laughs> so anyway, um, I was a um, typical child that um, read dictionaries and encyclopedias from page to page. And um, the one thing, this comet picture, um, really bothered me. It's the most beautiful thing I ever seen and mysterious too. I went back to this comet page over and over and it, I thought I should be an astronomer so that I can use the big telescope every day and see this comet anytime I want. But 20 years later, I didn't become an astronaut, uh, astronomer, but I decided to be a material scientist. I got PhD in material science, specially trained to uh, study mineralogy crystallography in nanoscale, as, uh, especially these uh, comet dust particles. We have these uh, samples in NASA at, here at JSC. So um, this is where I'm working at, um, this windowless building. Uh, inside, there's a, a very precious astro material samples. Uh, we don't want windows because um, we don't want hurricane to destroy these precious samples inside. The next door is the um, science facility to analyze those precious samples. Um, Inside this uh, big bolt door, very serious looking, there are uh, 380 kilograms of Apollo mission uh, lunar samples, and not sitting in the uh, room, but uh, inside this uh, glove bench, which is the pure nitrogen parched to um, protect the sample, um, not exposing to the dirty air, um, take out the sample uh, from this nitrogen chamber only when we send out the sample to the further, further analysis. Not just the Apollo um, lunar rocks uh, we have, we have the uh, six different um, astro material samples uh, here at JSC. Oh, the uh, one is the um, Antarctic meteorite samples. We have 20,000 of them. Some of them are coming from Mars. Some of them are from uh, Moon, but mostly they are coming from asteroid. And we also have a piece of the Sun, the very challenging mission called Genesis brought back the sample from the Sun. Currently, I'm uh, heavily involved in uh, three different missions. One is a cosmic dust mission, and the Stardust mission, and also the OSIRIS-REx, which uh, bring back the uh, very pristine asteroid sample uh, 2023. Uh, if you'd like to know about um, OSIRIS-REx, uh, please go to the Facebook and then be friend with the OSIRIS-REx so that uh, you, you will know a lot more about this mission. Um, I'm the uh, deputy uh, curation project lead of this mission. So um, I will talk about uh, this cosmic dust and stardust later. Uh, but first, why do we study astro materials? Um, because those samples hold the entire history of the solar system especially these tiny uh, dust particles are the oldest one, which means um, these dust particles um, having the memory of the, the, before the solar system was born. Uh, many of you know that solar system age is 4.5 billion years old. Um, precisely, it's 4.5672 billion years old. That number is coming from the study of the astro materials. Um, so 
This is the picture of the shooting stars. I'm sure you have seen the shooting stars. These, each one of the shooting star was um, comet dust particles before getting into the, um, the Earth's atmosphere. It burned up and then become the shooting star. Um, to uh, 400,000 tons of these kind of dust getting into the Earth's atmosphere every single year. So there is the way to capture those um, precious materials from space. Um, what NASA had been doing since 1981 is to send this uh, high altitude airplane up into the stratosphere, which is the twice as high as the commercial airplane can get. Um, once it reached to the high altitude, it uh, bring out the uh, dust corrector from this wing and come back to the Earth and then in the laboratory, we check this corrector, and there are the, these tiny dots. These are the comet dust, which is the 10 micron uh, in size. The other way to uh, get the comet dust particles is the uh, sending the expensive spacecraft into the comet. There is one that is called Stardust Mission brought back the comet built to sample back into uh, our laboratory 2006. So this is the com uh, excuse me, so this is the comet. Uh, this Stardust spacecraft uh, swing by the comet tail um, and this uh, tennis lucket shape uh, dust corrector get the dust into this um, and then uh, it goes back into the capsule and then came back to ours. This is in our building, the mission PI, uh, principal in investigator, Don Brownlee, is very happy because he could see some of the dust with his bare eyes in this uh, corrector. So this is the uh, Stardust um, Comet Dust Corrector that you can't really see any samples in it, but um, we have a separate special device to extract the uh, dust particles. This is uh, one millimeter in size that from here uh, the comet dust get in and then ended up right here, the scale bar is one millimeter. You still can't see the dust particle, but um, so making this um, triangle shape is the computer uh, operated uh, manipulation. But after this, uh, I use my bare hand uh, using the uh, special needle hours and hours to take out the one tiny uh, sample out from this uh, correction medium. This one uh, comet particle um, cost millions of dollars, probably, but it's not the money, but the science value is uh, just priceless because this one particle containing the entire history of the solar system. So this is the particle, 10 micron, uh, in size. Maybe some of you cannot imagine how small it is, so I put my hair in the same scale. Uh, this is probably uh, 20 times smaller than my hair thickness. This is what we are um, taking out and studying one by one. Uh, not just taking out, we slice it into 100 um, slices getting into a nanometer scale so that the uh, analytical instrument can um, look through what's really these comet dust are made of. In 2008, uh, my team discovered a new mineral from uh, comet dust. We named it brown diite, named after the mission PI of the stardust, Dr. Don Brownlee. Uh, this is a very simple um, mineral made of uh, manganese and, and silicon only. Um, 
MNSI uh, particularly, and the size is, uh, this brown, black part is the uh, brown diite, so it's only 100 nanometer, which is um, uh, 100 times smaller than the previous um, hair image. Uh, the other one we discovered from the meteorite, uh, Antarctic meteorite this year, um, the wasnite we named TIS titanium sulfide. Again, very simple uh, element uh, made a mineral, but um, this is even smaller than the brown diite. There are 5,000 uh, minerals in the uh, mineral list, but these are the two among the uh, smallest mineral ever um, approved as a new mineral. Uh, we named it Wassonite after Professor John Wasson from UCLA. Uh, I, let, I read his um, textbook uh, of meteorite when I was in college. So um, many people ask me why I didn't name them Keikoite. Um, <laughs> it's just not cool to do. <laughs> uh, but someday when I become 60, 70, 80 years old, uh, next generation mineralogist maybe name one mineral Keikoite if, if they think I deserve one, but we'll see. Um, so. Um, Speaking of Antarctic meteorite, this wasonite mineral was discovered from a meteorite named Yamato 691. Um, 691 means uh, the, this um, particular meteorite was discovered back in uh, 1969, which is the same year that the first Apollo mission brought back the lunar sample. Uh, Yamato 691 is a very special meteorite that is the discovered, uh, the first discovered meteorite in Antarctica. And a Japanese Antarctica expedition just crossing by the uh, ice field, of course it's life threatening back then, um, then came up with, came across the nine uh, meteorites on the field. They, they thought, oh, meteorites, um, these nine pieces must be the, um, uh, from the same, you know, meteorite broke up in a, into the piece. However, uh, it turned out it's all different meteorites, which means there is some uh, system to accumulate the meteorites in the uh, Antarctic uh, ice field. But since then, um, Japan and the US sent a systematic search of the meteorites in the Antarctica, and uh, US get uh, 20,000 Antarctic meteorites. Japan also have the same number of the meteorites uh, independently. So um, I have been to uh, get an opportunity to, to join that uh, expedition team back in 2004. Um, you may be n not be uh, able to distinguish, but there are ha uh, women, uh, five of us, I, uh, six of us, uh, female uh, team members. Here is me. And the team leader, Nancy Chabot, <laughs> Uh, she is the, uh, uh, she led this uh, mission five years straight. Um, all of us are just scientists, except two uh, mountaineers who keep our safety. Uh, they read the uh, weather over there to keep us um, safe during the six week uh, expedition. Um, Katie showed this uh, same image. This is the La Paz ice field. She went uh, the year before me. Um, everything is just blue and white. Blue part is the ice and white part is the snow. Uh, this is the tent site. This is the magnified image from the uh, airplane. This is me uh, standing there. And this is inside the tent. Uh, my tent mate, Bera, is cooking uh, salmon and rice right now. Um, this is not the astronaut uh, mission. I met her 
um, week before we deployed to Antarctica. So I didn't know her very well. Um, either we kill each other during the six weeks in a, in a small tent or become the best friend. I become the best friend. She is a very energetic person, um, very sweet too. We talk on the phone almost every week. So we line up uh, on the ice every morning and then start the uh, snowmobile and then start searching. Uh, sometimes every five minutes we uh, find this uh, black speck, which is always the meteorite. This is uh, astronaut Stan Love uh, holding the counter and a scale, and a uh, person um, photo documenting the meteorite. And this is me trying to open up this um, uh, Ziploc bag. Anyway, uh, in this season, we got 1,430 meteorites um, during this season. And um, out of these um, 100, 1,000 1, 1, samples, there is always one or two um, samples from Mars and um, Moon that is very important because we haven't been to those um, Mars and other uh, planets yet, but by going to Antarctica, we can get those uh, precious samples from different planets. Uh, let me uh, quickly show this uh, South Pole image. Uh, 100 years ago, exactly uh, 1911, December 14th, two weeks from now, the first person, first um, man stood on this uh, exact um, position. Uh, part, the, the South Pole, um, which is only 100 years ago, but it's still completely um, white. And uh, back then, uh, the crew, crew members died. It's such a hard thing to do. But 180 degrees turnaround, there is a huge building right now, the US um, National Science Foundation uh, funded um, science building. Uh, inside there, there are 250 scientists always studying um, climate change and so on to make our life better, to make the knowledge rich so that we can go forward. When I stood there and then saw this building, I saw 100 years from now, we can do the same thing to Mars, that make the building just like this over there. This is my favorite picture um, uh, painted by the famous uh, space artist Pat Roaring, the title 2020 Vision. I have the same copy, the uh, poster size uh, image back in uh, my house. I'm staring at this image and think, eight years from now, am I on Mars doing the same thing uh, eight years from now? I don't think so. But back in the laboratory, I can do the same thing and then be ready for this mission for some time in the future. And 2025, uh, NASA is sending people to asteroid and then get back the samples from there. And we are ready to analyze those samples. Um, Thank you very much.